This is the Bible Ranger here, and today is the third part of how to study the Bible or understanding the Bible. And I just want to let you know before I start that I give you kind of cliff notes, kind of a very condensed, no fluff. So you might have to look at these videos over and over again to get the full understanding of them, okay? All right, so let's get started. X marks the spot. All right, imagine you are a pirate. You're searching for the treasure of treasures. So you need a map, right? A treasure map, and you need reliable landmarks and clues. So you're basically looking for the X that marks the spot. All right, this is similar when it comes to understanding the Bible. We have two different types of interpretations, okay? We have something called an eisegesis, which is a technical word, which we're going to go over again in a few slides. But basically, you're putting your bias and your opinion into the text. No matter what it says before it or after or in content, you don't care. You're going to put whatever you want into it. Now, exegesis is you're trying to find out exactly what the author is actually trying to say or what he means. Imagine that you have a treasure map right here. And the treasure map is telling you that you need to go a hundred miles this way and then go to a mountain that looks like a lion's head. At the bottom of it, um, you find yourself a treasure at the base of it, um, the butt of it. So now you say, you know what, you've been traveling 50 miles and you look at this island over here. You, know that, you notice that this island looks a little bit like a lion. So here's a lion head. So you're saying, you know what, the person drawing this map probably didn't mean 100 miles. He probably meant 50 miles. He was probably tired. So I think he meant that this lion head looking island is, the, is it. And the bottom of the mountain would be the butt of the lion. So it's probably somewhere in here. And this is kind of a, a, a little example of putting an eyes of Jesus into it. Instead of actually going 100 miles, looking for the actual mountain that looks like a lion head. And at the base, the butt of the mountain, you actually find the treasure. Let's continue. All right, so these are main X's that marks the spot when it comes to the Bible. These are really important subjects that you don't really want to mess with. All right, like the Bible is God's word. Okay, and later on I will give you, after probably after this subject, I'm going to give you biblical proofs that proves the Bible. You don't have to apologize about the Bible. The Bible is, is genuinely the word of God, and you'll see that in the future videos. So, Another important thing is that God is three in one. Uh, you, we use the word Trinity. We use the word triune. Those words are not in the Bible, but the word, the Bible, even from Genesis chapter one, it talks about God is three in one. Um, but not three gods. It's only one God. It's just God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And that'll be a video too. Another one you don't want to mess with. These are major principles, okay? Jesus is fully God. He's not God Jr., okay? He was not created, like Jehovah's Witnesses say, okay? He was always here. He's always God. And number four would be, say we are saved by faith through grace, okay? But let's not be lazy Christians, okay? We are Christians who work for God, okay? So it's not by works, but we do work for the Lord. And it, I like to see it like when you get saved, you are employed by the Lord. You are not hiring. He's your boss. You are part of his family, his work family, but we are required to work, okay? Work kind of proves your salvation, but is not, you're not saved by works. Another one is that there is life after death, okay? Because Jesus rose from the dead, this is called our blessed hope. One day we're going to wait for this resurrection that's going to happen to us. And there should be another one listed here, um, the virgin birth, that Christ was born by a virgin. And that's very important because God, as the Holy Ghost, was the actual father and, and was the one that impregnated Mary. And that showed that Jesus did not have a connection of the sinful flesh. So he was sinless. That's very important. It should have been there. All right. So let's go back to this. I said Jesus, which is basically you're reading into the text, but, but it really isn't there. You're just reading into that. The other one is exegesis. You're drawing out what the author is trying to communicate to us, what he's actually trying to say. Imagine that. Imagine actually God wrote the Bible and he's actually trying to tell us something. Wow, that's ingenious, right? All right, so before I get to that, let me give you this illustration here. Um, you've seen this fish that represents Christianity, right? 
and that goes way back, and I can tell you more about that, but it's not important. But you see different ones. You see this one, plain fish, one with a cross, one with the word love, and one with these words that look like Greek. Well, they actually are Greek words, and they represent something. They have, the eye represents Jesus, X is Christ, God's is the, is the other one, and then Son, Savior. Jesus Christ, God's Son, who is the Savior. And that was basically, um, it also meant you, you become fisher of men. Um, Jesus did the miracle of the fishes. It, it means a lot of stuff. But whenever you see, in the old days, I used to get upset too. But whenever you see Xmas, people say, oh, they took Jesus out of, out of Christmas. But not really, because this really X is really Christ. So it's really is Christmas, Christmas is really the same thing. But anyway, I said that to say this. To remember these two words, if you remember the letter I, just remember that I am trying to put the meaning of whatever I feel into the passage. And X will be something like Xmas, Christ, down here. And this is what the Bible is actually trying to tell us. I just thought that would be something that you might want to hear. All right, so the Bible was not originally in verses. Um, verses are really good to try to help us find something. If I say, let's find John 1, 1. So you turn to the book of John, you find chapter 1, you see verse 1, and it's right there. However, sometimes it's, pl it's problematic because we can take verses like if they're a Bible in itself. You can't just take a verse and separate it because it's separated as a verse. We feel that we can make that into a doctrine. That is totally incorrect. And I'll give you a very simple illustration. In the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 10, it says that none are righteous, no, not one. It says no, there's no exceptions. And then a couple of verses later, it says all have sinned, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, if it's all, then Jesus must have sinned too, right? That's, this, is what, this is an ice of Jesus. I'm putting my own thoughts into it. I'm reading into the verse. However, there's about a hundred verses direct verses and indirect verses that actually tells you that Jesus was sinless. And I'll give you a direct one. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, it says, who, which is Jesus, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Okay, so it's telling you directly that Jesus did not sin. Now you find an indirect verse in the Bible that tells you that Jesus did not sin. This would be an indirect one. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, if we sin, we, we, our wages of our payments is going to be death. And this death is physical and this death is spiritual, both. But Jesus Christ, because he did not sin, is able to give us his eternal life, and, but it's through him. So that would be an indirect one, okay? But there's about a hundred verses like this. All right, secondary teachings. But before that, let me say one more thing about the major teachings, which is the those six steps, those six um, doctrines that really can't be messed with. Um, they're, these major teachings of God, they're, they're not secret, encoded, okay? They're not hidden in a message. They're not esoteric interpretations, which that means only a few people can understand that. Um, that, that grant us an additional clarity. No, no. Those teachings are very clear in the Bible, those main doctrines that can't be, can't be messed with. However, the secondary teachings are a little bit different, okay? Um, they're important, just, you know, the Bible, the whole Bible is important, okay? But, but it doesn't affect your salvation, okay? It doesn't hinge. The importance of that secondary teaching doesn't affect your salvation. That's very important. None of us Christians agree on everything, okay? Even the best of Christians, they don't, just, just don't. Things are not perfect yet. Things are still vague and we see through a glass, darkly. It's what the Bible says. So, examples of some secondary teachings are like if you're teaching pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib of tribulation. However, we all agree whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib or post-trib, there's going to be a tribulation and, and, and basically Christ is coming back. We all agree on that. It's just a matter of how we're going out there. Or the age of the earth, I believe is a young earth, and we'll be teaching on that in the future, and and several thousand years old, but some Christians believe that is millions and billions of years old. I don't see how they get that, but they do. 
but that does not affect the salvation. I've heard some good teachers in the Bible, but one time he was talking about creation versus evolution, and he was saying that he believes in you know, long millions and billions of years, which I couldn't believe that he believed that, but he did. However, that does not affect your salvation. Or teaching about the gifts of the spirits. There's, a, there's different teachings of that. However, that does not affect your salvation. That would be a secondary teaching, and there's more of those. As an example, in Mark chapter 9, verse 38 to 40, Jesus had disciples, as we know. Okay, and disciples were casting out demons. However, John, the beloved disciple, he saw this man that was not a disciple, uh, and, and he was casting out demons without even following Jesus. But he was doing it in the name of Jesus. And he told Jesus this. And Jesus said, don't rebuke him. Because if he's not against us, he's for us. So not everybody agrees on everything, okay? But the general principle is that he knows that Jesus is Lord. This could be done in the name, in the name of Jesus. And, and we have the main primary doctrines together. That same example of this verse in another gospel is Luke 9.50. And it basically says the same thing. All right. The only one, very, very important teaching. This is one of the primaries. All the good teachings of the Bible and all the poetic writings of the Bible would mean absolutely nothing, nothing if Jesus had not risen from the grave. If he was still in the grave, we'd be all in trouble. Matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 32, Paul says that if Jesus did not raise from the grave, he says, drink and be merry. In other words, party. Okay, for tomorrow we die. This is all we got in this life. So have as much fun as you're going to have in the sinful way, and that's it, because there's nothing else to live for. However, we have a promise that Jesus is going to come back, and that's called our blessed hope. So repent, confess your sins to the Lord, and let him be Lord of your life. He's the proven Savior by the resurrection. Feel free to comment, and if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Appreciate that, and thumbs up, and thank you for listening all the way through. Partner with me on that. Thank you very much. This is the Bible Ranger, keeping the Bible simple yet rich in content. Thank you.